My name is Simon Peter. One day, my partners and I were cleaning our nets after a long, hard night of fishing. We were tired. We were discouraged. We had nothing to show for our efforts. Jesus, preaching as usual to the many people who followed him from here to there, listening to his every word. He asked if he could get into my boat. I rowed him out a little so that his voice would carry. When he'd finished teaching, he asked me to row out a little further and throw my nets into the water again. I told him it was pointless. We'd worked all night, caught nothing. But I did as he asked. And then, astonishingly, so many fish. The nets broke, trying to reel them in. So many fish. We filled both of our ships until they began to sink under the weight. Then I fell to my knees before the Lord, feeling sinful and faithless in his holy presence. Then he told me I wouldn't catch fish any longer. I'd fish for people didn't fully understand, but I left my boats, my fish, my livelihood. I left everything to follow Jesus. I've never looked back. Hmm. Tonight, he tells us that one of these 12 men, his faithful disciples, will betray him. I vainly promise to follow him, even to death. But he looked right into my eyes and it said, before the rooster crows, I would deny him three times. Deny him. Am I not the rock he called me to be? Could I lose my Lord, my friend, because I'm not strong enough to be faithful? Is it I? I've been known as Peter's little brother, Andrew. Since the day I was born, years ago I left the fishing business to follow that fiery preacher, John the Baptizer. He was anointed by God to prepare the way for the long-awaited Messiah. And now I follow him. I love to bring Jesus to people. I brought my brother to Jesus and have watched him grow and become a strong leader among us. I brought the little boy with lunch of five loaves and two fishes to Jesus. I have even brought Gentiles to meet the Master because he is open and loving to anyone who is searching for the truth. But Jesus has enemies in high places. 
enemies who would not would love to silence him or even see him die. And he speaks of a betrayer in our midst. Oh, please do not let it be me who brings sorrow to my Lord. Jesus, is it I? I am James, the lesser, known as such to describe my stature and to differentiate me from many other men named James. Since joining Jesus' group of followers, I've seen the most miraculous things. Jesus has the power to calm the sea, even the wind and rain obey his voice. Jesus has the power over demons. He has cast out evil spirits and given us the power to do the same in his name. And he has the power of healing. He has taken away diseases that many people have suffered for, with year for years even from birth. Beyond this, he has the power to forgive sin. And now, one of these men at this dinner table who eats and drinks with him will betray him. How could anyone doubt that he is the Lord, our Messiah? After walking and talking with him, after seeing prophecies fulfilled and miracle after miracle, proof after proof, he has called each of us to follow. Who could turn away? Is it I? My name is James. John is my younger brother. We used to work with Peter and Andrew in the fishing industry. Jesus called us to follow him on the same day that he called Peter. And we did, thinking that he would establish his kingdom on earth and that he would be that we would be his right-hand men. Jesus calls John and me 
the sons of thunder. Actually, we are the sons of Zebedee, a rich and powerful man in this community who is a personal friend of some of the more influential religious leaders. At one time, I had hoped that this would assure me of a position of power in the new kingdom. In fact, my mother suggested I should sit at Jesus' right hand when he claimed his throne and John at his left hand. After all, it was we who were invited to the mountain with Jesus and we saw him transfigured. His face shone like the sun. And the voice of God spoke out of heaven. He chose me. He chose each of us. How could one of us betray him? We have seen his perfect adherence to the law. We have heard his voice of God say, This is my son. We have been present during countless miracles, healings, works no mere man could accomplish. Could it be my brother John? Could it be me? Is it I? I am Matthew, and before I came to be a disciple of Jesus, I worked for the Roman government, collecting your taxes. I used to take advantage of those perks of the profession, skimming a little off the top for my use. Listening to Jesus, I came to realize that I had committed a sin against my neighbors. I took advantage of these people. I cheated them. I became wealthy by stealing their hard-earned wages and goods. I heard earthly treasures instead of seeking eternal ones. My heart changed because of you. I even threw a feast and invited some of my people to listen to you. And maybe change as well. But now he speaks of a traitor amongst us. Will others suspect me, a known publican, a sinner? Lord, is it I? Before Jesus called me, I was a member of the Zealots. We believe in God and that God alone rules over this holy nation of Israel and we refuse to pay homage or taxes to any Roman emperor it goes against my nature. But Jesus teaches that God ordains all powers and governments on earth, allowing them to rule over us. Allowing them, and we must give them our due and treat them with respect. Since following Christ, I have tried to channel my zeal into telling others about Jesus, God's Son, and reaching out to people for the kingdom? Is there a spy among us? A Roman, perhaps? How could any follower of Jesus question his power and authority? He is God. He is our king. He is greater than any government. Could I somehow revert to my old ways? 
Could I, Simon, betray my king? Is it I? known as Bartholomew to some, Nathaniel to others. I've been a diligent student of the scriptures and a disciple of John the Baptizer. My friend Philip told me about this Jesus of Nazareth, saying he was the one about whom the prophets had written. At first I was skeptical. Jesus of Nazareth? A filthy, immoral place. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But John said, Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Then I met this Jesus. He seemed to know me already, to know my innermost thoughts. Although I have, I have always been a devout man, I realized Jesus was offering something more intimate, more intimate, more personal than my religion ever offered before. For over a thousand years, we have been celebrating the Feast of Passover, remembering the bitter slavery in Egypt with the bitter herbs, remembering the ten plagues with the ten drops from the goblet, remembering how the blood of the sacrificed lamb caused the angel of death to pass over the Israelites and spare their firstborn, remembering how God set his people free, that wonderful story, how they fled with no time to cook leavened bread. They baked unleavened bread in the warmth of the sun. Now Jesus breaks this un leavened bread and says, this is my body. He shares the cup and says, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. I don't understand. What could make me betray my friend? Lord, is it I?
My name is Philip. Jesus came to me one day when I was working and said simply, follow me. I spent an entire day with him and I was convinced this is truly the promised one. It has taken some time for me to understand that this man, this fulfilled promise, is actually God here among us. Recently, thousands of men and women, families, were sitting on the hillside listening to him teach. Jesus asked me where he could buy bread to feed them all. At once I thought only of the actual physical cost of such a venture. Why, our treasury doesn't hold such funds. I gave no thought to the people's discomfort or to the possibility of a divine miracle. But Jesus, oh, Jesus took five tiny pieces of bread and two tiny fish, prayed over them, and broke them into pieces. He fed thousands and we collected 12 baskets of leftovers. God here among us, who would deny the promised one? This divine presence in our midst. And to whom would this person deliver Jesus? To the vain and arrogant priest who refused to believe God has kept his promise? Or to the pagan Roman government that fears a rival ruler? Could any one of us forget his power, his compassion? Could I forget? Is it I? I am Thaddeus. His hands, carpenter hands, rough, weathered hands, and yet so gentle and loving. His hands reached out and touched a leper, and the disease was erased from his body. His hands reached out and touched Peter's mother-in-law, and her fever disappeared. His hands reached out and lifted Jairus' daughter from her deathbed. His hands opened the ears of the deaf and the eyes of the blind and mended the bones of the lame. Countless infirmities, illness, deformities, gone. His hands reached out, blessing little children when others would have turned them aside. His hands reached down, rescuing Peter out of a churning sea that would have swallowed him. His hands blessing and breaking bread, folding in prayer, such simple gestures, and yet so profound. Those hands that have shown mercy and kindness, given love and healing. Those hands that served me, Thaddeus, and his other brothers, and worshiped his father. They are the hands of God in this very room. All of us have received blessing from his hands. All of us have seen the miracles those hands have performed. Who could betray him into the hands of an enemy? Will I, Thaddeus, betray you? Is it I?
I am John, the beloved disciple, beloved, loved by Jesus, loved by the one who was in the beginning with God, loved by the one who's greater than all of us and yet washes our feet, setting an example of humility and servitude. You might think that because Jesus calls me his beloved disciple, that I have reason to be proud. Oh, how I have learned that the opposite is true. I once thought that I might hold a place of power and prestige in his kingdom, but he has shown me over and over that the war he wages is a spiritual battle. He reaches out to the needy, paupers. He does not seek out the rich and powerful. He dines in the homes of sinners and common folk, not the elite. I have seen him equally befriend a well-known Pharisee and an immoral woman, forgiving both. God has sent his son because he loved the world, the lowly, me, so much so that, so much that he does not want any one of us to perish, but to have everlasting life. This Jesus, he is the way, the truth. He is life. Even though we are his closest friends and followers, I don't think we truly understand the depth of his love. I believe he will give his life for mine. How could I not do the same? Will my pride cause me to stumble? Will I betray him? Could I? Is it I? Well, I've been listening to Jesus speak around this table all night, and I simply do not understand. Words meant to comfort, but words met with suspicion and confusion and misunderstanding. Talk of betrayal met with doubt and suspicion. Where is he going? There is so much yet to be done right here, right now. Sometimes I marvel that I... Thomas, have seen him with my own eyes. I have touched the Lord with my hands. I have watched him perform wonders, change lives. I don't want him to go away. Not now, not ever. And how can we follow him if we don't know where he's going? Is there something that I have done or will do that will contribute to this betrayal he speaks of? Has he seen my lack of faith? My hidden doubts? My fears? Is it I? I am Judas Iscariot, the treasurer for this group. I have followed Jesus, but I am growing tired of his reluctance to take a stand against our oppressors. I believe he is who he says he is, but why would God send a Messiah for this, to wash feet and serve bread? I have no need of a spiritual king. We need a political king, someone to rise up and throw, overthrow these Roman tyrants. Thousands of people would follow him over mountainsides and across rivers to hear him speak. Surely he could put together an army in no time. Something must be done to force him to make his move, to lead us to victory, to establish the new kingdom. 
a betrayer among us? Indeed, these men look at one another, suspiciously around the table, wondering, guessing, accusing. They're looking inwardly and pondering their own motivations. But why do they sit here like sheep waiting for a shepherd? Someone must do something. Well, I have. Tonight, the elders and the chief priests will help me help him usher in the promised kingdom. History will thank me for this. Oh yes, someone has betrayed him. Perhaps all of us will do so before this night is over. Master, is it I? Thank you.